read me romance read read me romance read me romance read read me romance you could take a look in a book that's fine or you could sit back relax and unwind and read me romance read read me romance welcome back lady listeners hey lady listeners welcome to a new week of read me romance we have me Crawford with us this week and I'm excited because she was the one that emailed and said how dirty can this be I know and I was like the limit does not exist I'm super <laughs> interested in how this is gonna go because mm-hmm. I've been reading Millie Crawford for a while mm-hmm. and like I think I said it last week I haven't been reading her as much lately because she's gotten really dark this this one is so dark. this is yeah. what I'm thinking I'm like damn I wonder what this is gonna be the book by it's really good i'll read it in a little bit but this one's called hide and seek and so right off the bat with the cover and it like it's a dark cover it's like in the woods or something mm-hmm. i was like oh shit. i think it's a menage Ooh. no a is thruple it? thruple is that what it is? Which is what is it when it's three men and one woman oh i don't know a good time. <laughs> a, good, a good fucking time. That's exactly what it is. Correct answer, Melissa. Only if it's sexual. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Only in a book, okay? I, there's no way I could please three men. <laughs> or that I would want to. How about that? Yeah. Uh, right off the bat, men are trash. Just get that out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we were talking about something before we started recording, and then Mel was like, we should definitely talk about this on the podcast. So before we get to Mila Crawford in a little bit, I'm going to give you a a tiny hint of a backstory. So there is a business downtown where I live in Albemarle. It's called Tiffany's at the Boardroom, and it is this woman named Tiffany that owns it. She actually took, this was a historic building downtown that she spent forever renovating and restoring, and it is gorgeous on the inside and there's like this big upstairs with like huge ceilings with all this like beautiful molding and like metal and stuff and then there's like these wood floors anyways that doesn't even matter but it's a cool building (laughs) but um so she holds different events during the weekends and she decided to do a drag show there's a company and I can't remember the name of it but they travel all over the state And they do drag shows. So basically all you have to do is hire the company and they take care of everything. And so she said she met with the company. She talked about, you know, what kind of show they wanted to have, agreed on everything, set the date. And when this happened, there was a group of men that lost their fucking minds because um, they're... I don't even know if we should say it. Like, can we, can we say it? boys? Can yeah, they're like, that? they're like, pr- they're proud boys. That, is that, that what group. it's called, proud boys? Yeah, that's what the, um, <gasps> the name of the group is. What? I just remembered something. I'll get what? to it now that you said that. What? Oh my God. Go what? ahead and keep going. Keep going. Okay, this you're going to look it up. into that. Okay, no, I all right. have it, but it's going to oh, play okay. into it. Okay. So anyways, um, so yeah, it was a group, the proud boys, they're like, um, terrible so so they protested whenever she had it they've been harassing her business and so last night they brought it to city council and they were complaining because they said that originally when she scheduled the event it was not listed as 18 and up and so they're basically hiding their bigotry and their misogyny behind the fact that they want to protect children so she didn't have this list as 18 up to begin with because Tiffany said she thought parents should be able to decide that for themselves, mm-hmm. that they should be able to determine if their kids can handle going to a drag show. So after this like upset and but this one group of men that, you know, kept harassing her online and like going by her business and doing shit and it was just awful. So she finally made it 18 and up. She said we refunded two tickets that were people who were under the age of 18. It was only two. And she had sold out like right away. This event had sold out. And so, um, but that wasn't good enough for them. So last night they came before city council and complained that this was being allowed to happen in our city. And it was just, it's absolutely ridiculous that we're, we're in the position to where we're arguing about this, where it's like, if you don't like this, don't go to it. You don't have to like have, a riot. Here's my thing. Cause like you said, 
at one point you were like, I don't think, or you said your dad said, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I don't think these men know what a drag show is. Yeah. My dad and, watched it. He was like, he's, they don't really understand what a drag show and is. And you know what I, you know what popped in my head when you said that? And that's why mm-hmm. I was like, we should start recording because I know what he means, what he is mm-hmm. saying and what these men think a drag show is mm-hmm. because they go to strip clubs. Yeah think that they take their clothes off like Mm -hmm. that where when a it's very different when you go into a strip club and women are stripping Mm -hmm. and you go into a strip club and men are stripping Mm -hmm. it's like this completely different Mm -hmm. atmosphere totally how things are playing out where Mm -hmm. i think these men view it as it's going to be sexual yep where us women we know that Mm -hmm. even if they were going to take their clothes off we know no. it's not really a sexual. It's a fun. It's fun. Yeah, we're laughing. We're having. When you go time. to the yeah, a drag show is like bottomless mimosas, dirty jokes. You know, like hamming it up. Every drag show, I fucking love a drag brunch. That is yes. my favorite thing in the world to go to is a drag brunch. I get day drunk and then I go home and I laugh my ass off. Like it's amazing. It's a win win for everybody. I just had. Yeah thought about the age thing because when you mm-hmm. said that I was like that's interesting because my daughter who is 16 going on 17 she went to a drag show like a month ago I didn't I even didn't even think on it like that there yeah. would be an it didn't even register to me she's like oh I'm going to a drag show and I was like okay have fun yeah yeah I didn't even think about an it's age performance art it's not like they don't take their clothes off. That's not what happens in a drag show. They like dress as, you know, famous campy icons and they tell dirty jokes and puns. And I mean, the one, the last one I went to, I think, was when um, she was dressed as Cher, pregnant Cher. And like they were having, it was on, they did it at um, the place is called Lips. There's a couple of them across the country, actually, where they do drag brunches. And this one had a pregnant Cher. And then she ended up dressing up as a nun and stuff at the end of it. And it was like really blasphemous, but it was hilarious. And I want to say there were probably kids at this one because they did, they had like a pancake thing too. I mean, that's like, I don't know. And I get it. If you're a parent and this makes you uncomfortable, don't take your kid to it. You don't have to go to a city council meeting with all your boys and get up there and he read the statute that said what is and is not allowed in the city to happen and my husband obviously like does this because he's a planning director Mm -hmm. he helped write this ordinance and so but they're reading it out and he's like he said you can go to this company's website he wasn't even He didn't even understand how this company worked. He said, you can go to this company's website and you can see all the deplorable things that they do. It's an abomination. It's what they said. I, when you said that word abomination last night, I was so like, I just, I I just roll my ass out of my head. I just was thinking of Kevin because I know your husband. He's so Mm -hmm. like confrontational but in a good way you know what yeah. i mean like he stands yeah. up for what he would right. just he, never he's like, like ready to go yeah. but he uh-huh. can't in this situation mm-hmm. because it's he a has, work environment yeah and you have to allow them to speak yeah i mean it's a public mm-hmm. it's setting a, yes exactly right yeah and I'm so like, oh. so he says this and i guess she, and, and tiffany got up and spoke after him and she said she was like, I just want it on the record, my defense, basically, because all yeah. of he, what he said is entered into the record that is public. Um, like, yeah, you can have the public can go back and read it. So she said, if you go to the company and hire them, they will they uh, you hire them to do what you want them to do. They don't c- just come in and do their thing. They cater to you. And they she said, you know, they abbreviate their show to what you want in your business. Mm -hmm. And she was like, they do all kinds of things, but that's not what we signed up for. She was like, if it's in like all of the drag show information, it says what's going to happen on there. And she posted all that up on her website when she created the event. But this guy gets up there and he says he was like, I can't even tell you what this company does. I can't show you the images because it would be, he was like, it's, you know, it's not like, I don't know, whatever it was, he couldn't show it in public is what he was saying because this wasn't like, it wasn't decent. But then he gets on and reads the ordinance and I swear to fucking God, he says, 
he talks about like, well, in the ordinance, it says that you can't show genitalia such as like blah, blah, blah. And like starts reading off body parts. And then he says, and this includes masturbation, sodomy, blah, blah. And he's like saying all these things. And I'm like, so he's you implying. can't show. Yeah, yeah. I was like, you can't show pictures, but you can sit here and talk about masturbation in front of, or in front of all the people in this room because he's reading the ordinance. But it's like, that's what the ordinance says that can't happen. But it doesn't, it didn't even apply to what he was talking about, but he read it for shock value, yeah. you know, so that everybody got flustered and upset because he's talking about genitalia and anuses. People are fucking stupid. I yeah. just always think that the energy and the anger that people put into some of this mm -hmm. stuff. I was watching a it's clip. small dick energy. I was watching like. this clip where these guys are coming out on TikTok or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they were, and actually, I thought it was really sweet because one of them they did was high school boys. They were mm -hmm. like, you, you get to date one male celebrity. Who is it? And these boys coming out of the locker room aren't even hesitating. They're, they're like, like Ryan Reynolds. Is that yeah, the answer? Yeah, they're, 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 them. They're yeah. popping them off, popping them off. But then mm -hmm. he does this older generation, and some of them are a little hesitant. Yeah, uh -huh. and one gets so defensive. I mean, oh like angrily. And I'm like, you're a little angry. Mm -hmm. Is there a little reason you don't want to? Yep. <laughs> so mad yep they're like it's like that saying what is that um shakespearean thou, she protests thou, a little too, too, much, too much thou dost protest too much yeah exactly it's like oh you're a closet homophobic okay great mm -hmm. but um you know it, it's funny to me though that like there's just i don't know how people expend so much I energy just, on this it sucks for me it just sucks because i think of that other people might be other kids might be hearing this mm -hmm. oh tiffany said it and it was it was beautiful the way she said it she actually put it on her tiktok and um if you want to go see it um her tiktok is called um fuck what's well, tiffany's at the boardroom is the name of her restaurant so you can look it up on facebook if you want to see it but she got up and, and she wrote someone recorded her speech and so she posted it uh, just that her section on tiktok and she said when I was a little girl, my sister told my dad she wanted to be a fire truck, not a fireman, like not a <laughs> firewoman. She wanted to be a fire truck. And she said, and my dad and all his like love and glory was like, all right, you can be whatever you want to be. If you want to be a truck, you can be a truck. And so that's how she started it, where she's like, this is the household that I grew up in. And my family raised three strong women. And yeah. so she said, and women who don't back down. And so, you know, she goes through it and then she says, I want to be the place in the community where there might be someone that feels like they don't belong, but I give them a place to belong. And it was just like, it yeah. made me really emotional. Like when she said it, it, it was really sweet. So, I mean, I thought that that was great. She included that. And then she talked about the event and stuff and then what it means for the town. Cause I'm actually on a committee with her and mm -hmm. we meet tomorrow <laughs> and like, we're on an event committee. We plan events downtown and so, um, you know, and she says, like, I would love for our town to be known for the arts and, you know, what we can offer versus, you know, our, our being exclu excluding people and, you know, not not being inclusive. So this reminds yeah. me um, for some and I was pulling it up when you were talking about yeah. it. I didn't want to get the wrong name but mm -hmm. and you know how it's been a big huge issue about transgenders in mm -hmm. sports and stuff yeah mm -hmm. and i haven't given a lot of thought about it but in utah it came up for a vote mm -hmm. and this republican i wish i could find his speech mm -hmm. he actually voted against them he voted not against uh he voted against his party okay okay yeah he voted against his mm -hmm. party and he stood up and he gave this speech and in the speech he talked about that there was literally like two or three people within their state that wanted to do this yeah uh -huh. and he was like i've never seen such hate and anger directed such a small portion of a community and a community of 
children technically because they were yeah. in high school mm-hmm. and he says and i refuse to take away something that could be an outlet mm-hmm. for a child going th- through something like this having yeah. a gender a gender mm-hmm. identity problems and he's like yeah. i will not sign this Good for him. Yeah. He, I mean, he ended up losing, but his speech, I was like, that was so sweet. Yeah. And it's, you know, that's the thing. It's like, it's such a, it is such a small group and community of people. And even, you know, even like outside of trans people, you know, to look to a drag show, who's to say that someone just in the LGBT plus community, you know, that they don't see that and think like, I'm not, I'm not so different, you know, Mm -hmm. where it's like, maybe they don't even identify with them, but they feel like that, that they're, that they're welcome in that, you know? So, I mean, and I just think, what does it hurt to have it? It's to me, it's kind of like insurance. Like you get it because just in case, so why not have something like this just in case, you know, like just in case there's someone here who needs that, why not do it? Yeah. Anywho's. But what I seen, okay, so I got an article sent for me, and I haven't even sent it, seen it in the book world. A guy sent me this, a guy friend of mine sent okay. me this. He goes, have you seen this? Is anybody talking about this? What is it? And it's, you know, the Capitol riots? You know, mm-hmm. the FBI is looking for people who participated Ooh, in that. Oh, yeah, okay. They found... Um, a cover model. Stop. That's how he was found. <gasps> no, who is it? I don't recognize him, but he's on a few covers. Like, Nicole oh my Snow. god, shut up. Yeah, Mila Cole. But that's how they track. I can show you. Okay, I, I don't know if you'll be able to see. I don't know. I can't really see. But yes, yeah, so they tracked Shut him down, the but nobody's talking up. about it in the but in the book world. Girl, they, you need to go post FBI, that in headquarters right now. <laughs> the FBI tracked him down because of his the facial recognition and finding him on covers Shut of the book. Look up. I wow. was that is incredible. That's that made my whole day. That was I know. <laughs> but that's just a Made me think of that, putting that together. I was That's like, oh, awesome. Shit. <laughs> how funny, though. Like, but how weird is that? Yeah. Anybody talking about it? Well, in the romance community, is so small, too. Like, I'm shocked. I'm shook. It. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about Mila a little bit before we get into it. You've got some books that you love by her that we were talking about earlier. Um, yes. Mila Crawford. Yes. Okay. So, this is what I. I was, when I was going back through, because I was like, let me find some of the ones that I really liked. And like I said, she has turned dark. But then when I realized one of my favorite books by her is kind of dark. Which one? Because it's called Ruthless. Oh, wait, have I heard of this one? And so this book is the hero is an asshole. He kind of bullies her in the beginning Mm because she's kind of like Miss Perfect and stuff. But as the story progresses, well, spoiler alert, it's double virgins. So Mm. that's always a plus. Yes. (laughs) You start to unravel this man or this boy, this Mm -hmm. teenage boy, and why he's doing some of the things he does and acting the way. And it's very emotional. And it's very, like, not emotional, like, I'm going to cry. But you know that emotional where you see people have breakthroughs yeah, and you're so yeah. happy for them. Uh-huh, yeah. And that's what that is. Because in the beginning of the book, I'm so mad at him. And he keeps <laughs> calling her like, he calls her a little mouse. Like she's a little mouse. Oh, okay. Around and uh-huh. he just can't stand her because she's so perfect and pretty and she does everything right. But she mm-hmm. is quiet. But... Yeah, I remember that. I think I want to reread it. I think it was one of my favorite books the year it came out. Maybe that's why I feel like I've read it. You've, yeah, yeah, I probably talked about it before. Yeah. But that was like, it's in Kindle Unlimited. It was, it's one of, I think it is my favorite book by her. That's awesome. 
So. I love that. Well, the, a male recommendation goes a long way on here. Let me just tell you <laughs> from my experience with listeners telling me I always listen to Mel's recommendations. I'm like, bitch, I'm, I'm right here. Because <laughs> it's the, um, because sometimes <laughs> the problem with the asshole hero for me that doesn't work is you don't get the correct grovel. Yeah. And you really get the correct or like grovel. get enough of it. Yeah. Get enough of it mm -hmm. and an understanding of it. And I also like the right when, hand. Yeah, I also like because why she was shy, at the same time it started to click to her. Okay, something's wrong here. You know what I mean? Like yeah. why is he she like takes a step back and is like, why is he being this way? Mm -hmm. And then she starts to come from an angle of I'm going to help this person. Okay. Which is also very empowering too, because you get to, yeah. it's, you still have the sweet shy heroine, but at the same time, she's strong mm -hmm. in this different dynamic of a way. I love that. Like, she's like, he wants to bully her to scare her away. And at mm -hmm. first she lets him. And then she's like, wait a second. No, I'm going to show up. <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to show up and I'm going to make you do it. I love I love that in a book. Just compassion in a book, you know. That mm -hmm. really is what tugs at my heart a lot of times. Is you know, it's not that the heroine's a pushover or that she doesn't have a backbone or whatever. She's just got so much compassion that she's like, "No, I'm going to I'm going to lean into this." I That's love it. what I love mm. about when we do not to talk about ourselves or anything. <laughs> Is that when we write females and even when they're being cunty, mm -hmm. we're always kind of lean into, oh, she must have There's some issues yeah. she needs to deal mm -hmm. with. We don't like mm -hmm. try to tear down, even though she's trying to like maybe steal the man or whatever. Yeah. You're like, mm -hmm. she's got some issues she needs to deal with. I will with. say that we don't. I, we have not written that in a long time mm -hmm. where we've written where there's another woman that sucks. Yeah. You know, where it's like, I can't even remember the last time we wrote a woman that was like the bad guy, you know, because mm -hmm. we don't do love triangles, but I just don't like the idea of tearing down women, even in books, I don't either. You know, That's yeah. So it's like, we really avoid that. Even like, if you, I even have, I know we have, a brat, like, a even time. if there's just like a co worker that they work with, mm -hmm. yeah, I, that they're not even part of the main story. Yeah. I'll be like, oh, she has her own. Her anger towards me is about herself, and she should probably work on that. And I, like feel sorry for her yeah um, and that's what i would say in the heroine's inner monologue yeah that you would explain why yeah, yeah. that you would kind of justify it. i was just thinking i know the last time that i wrote like catty bitches and it was finding his unicorn and i think at the time when we were writing it i was really mad and i was like i'm gonna make these bitches pay <laughs> I, I distinctly remember writing it. I was like, how can we hurt these people without murdering them? <laughs> I love that. So I, I think that was the last time. And that's been like three years ago. I mean, if you're ever reading a book and something comes off really off brand from an author, like suddenly somebody's murdered. Yeah. They're probably going through something. They're going something. through something. They're going through some shit. Yeah. And they just needed to kill somebody. Maybe that's Even what Mila Crawford's doing right thing. now. <laughs> Mila Crawford's like, I'm in my dark phase. Leave me alone. <laughs> I got to kill some motherfuckers yeah, around these here. These bitches are going down. <laughs> All right, so I'll read you um, her author bio right now. Mila Crawford loves romance, especially dirty short stories, so she decided to start writing her own. What can you expect from her books? No cheating and a happily ever after. Boom. That's all you need to know. Yeah, like I said, they can be dark, but they're mm -hmm. always wrapped back around heroes mm -hmm. waiting for their mm -hmm. moment to strike to have them and things like that. I love it. Um she uh she asked me to swap out her book blur book blur because she came up with a new one and i actually like the new one it's really like catchy so it says my name is stella adams and i'm in love with three men i was like immediately you have me <laughs> the axe was an animal his desires are visceral and come from the most debased human needs Ronan is sweet and nurturing. He takes care of me, showing me how precious I am, even when no one ever taught him how. Kian is a monster. He needs to invoke pain to feel anything. 
They're all different, but they're all mine and I'm theirs. And now my men want to tie me, tie me to them forever. So it's cute. So actually it's connected to another book. Yep. It says, this is an extended epilogue for room 22. So wow. this is you like an extended that. happily ever after. So, um, so room 22, it ties into the dangerous center series. So if you like this, you can check all those out. Um, the Kindle copy of this book, um, Hide and Seek, that you're about to listen to, has four extra chapters. So if you get the ebook, it's got extra chapters in it if you want to read more of this. Um, and her giveaway this week is a signed copy of Bound Together. Um, and I also want to mention she has a new release. It's a full-length novel that's coming out October 4th. It's a dark retelling of Weathering Heights, but it has a happily ever after. It's called Original Sin. I loved Weathering Heights, except the ending. I felt like that was so tragic. So I love that she's I'm giving sure it a happily ever after. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to redo like, it. Some books need to be retold, okay? Let me just say that. All right. So I guess let's do it. All right. We'll send them in. All right. See you guys on the other side. Bye. This is Room 22, Hide and Seek by Milla Crawford. Read for you by Jarman Day. Author Notes Dear Reader, This is an extended prologue for my book Room 22, Hide and Seek. This book is a poly romance with three men and one woman. This book is MMFM. This book has trigger warnings, so please read at your own risk. Degradation Praise Biting Marking Step Sibling Knife Play Come Play Public Sex Act of Violence Rough Sex Chapter 1 Ronan Can't shake the stocking habit, huh? Stella murmurs. Watching a woman get ready is sexy. Watching Stella get ready is divine. The girl looks attractive in a paper bag, but the world stops and pays attention when she goes all out. So there's no way I'll let her go anywhere without one of us by her side. I can't imagine there was a time when she wasn't aware of the power she has on every man who comes into contact with her. She isn't looking at me. Her pretty brown eyes are focused on the red lipstick she's applying to her perfect, full lips. Like a junkie, I reach for my hit, wrapping my arms around her waist and trailing my lips along her delicate nape. Rabbit, it's not stalking. It's worship. Where you go, we follow. Think of yourself as God, and we're your pilgrims. She waves her hand in the air, showcasing the small room with a mirror, sink, and toilet. The ladies' washroom should be off-limits. I lock the door. Good thing this is one of those fancy unisex ones, huh? Ronan, what are you doing? I'd like to admire you as you put on that lipstick, while my cock's buried deep in your sweet pussy. I growl, nipping at her earlobe. The sweet symphony of her soft, vibrant giggle cascades over my body like warm summer rain. Stop that. The guys will wonder what's taking me so long. Kean gets insane when he assumes something happened. Ignoring her, I trail one hand up her thick, silky thighs, bunching up her black dress. You seem to think I give a damn. I've got a raging heart on, and your warm, tight pussy is in front of me. Now, you're going to be a good girl and scream at the top of your lungs while I fuck my pretty pink cunt. I trail my finger along her labia, and she moans. No panties. Such a perfect slut, knowing her place and always ready to be taken by her men. Were you waiting to be fucked, Stella? She moans as I glide a finger into her slick heat. Isn't this how you want it? As I remember the last time I wore panties, Kean belted my tits a bright red for disobeying. Her skin flushes as I chuckle in her ear. I only remember you screaming as you came on my dick. Pressing down on her lower back, I push Stella forward. Multiple times, if I recall. She shuffles in her purse and takes out a hairbrush. Ronan, we don't have time for this. Now I know why women carry such giant bags. They have a whole damn arsenal in there. Her legs slide open, and her hand slams against the mirror to brace herself as I glide one finger into her pussy before adding another. Your pussy sure wants us to make time. Be quick. 
I nip at her shoulder, abandoning her waist as I grab her brush and smack her from behind with the bristle side. Her body jerks, and a yelp escapes her lips. So pretty when you're a good girl or a bad slut. Everything about you is perfection, Stella. Fuck, she moans, and I smack her again with the brush. So fucking beautiful. Pussy exposed for me, taking the brush and still wanting more. She watches as I pull out of her cunt and reach into her bag, pulling out her hand lotion. Unscented Vaseline. It's a good thing you don't like perfumed products, Stella. It makes fucking your ass so much more convenient. She moves a hand to pull her dress up her body in an invitation for me to do my worst. I almost come like a 12-year-old boy looking at porn for the first time when she exposes her round stomach. Stella has no idea how I could come from simply looking at her damn tummy. It's round, soft, and real. Dips and valleys of her beauty always leave me stunned and rip words from my throat like a thief in the night. Nothing in life leaves me speechless except this queen before me. She shivers as the cold white lotion hits her heart-shaped ass. Fuck, I moan as I watch the white liquid glide down her ass crack. Slowly, I rotate my index finger around her sphincter. I'm not sure if I want my cum leaking out of your pussy or this tight ass of yours. I don't care. Just fuck me, she screams. I chuckle at her demands. Deep down, my pretty rabbit is as depraved as the rest of us, and I love her for it. You think Keen and Axel will be upset that I'm the one balls deep in your pussy when they sit out there with your parents? I don't care. Fuck me. Are you sure you want to play this game? You don't know what those two will do to you. They haven't been able to fuck you all day. The mirror shakes as Stella repeatedly slams her palm against it. I don't care. I'll deal with it. Few women could handle three psychos, but Stella takes everything we throw at her and loves us regardless. The things the world sees in us that disgust them are the things Stella revels in. I grew up with two parents who were never around. They had my sister and me and left us as if nannies and drivers could substitute for parents. My mother was too busy with her career in Bollywood, and my father was too focused on his side pieces and the illegal dealings that allowed him to show his face to the world as a legitimate oligarch. Neither wanted kids, but we provided a front and made great props for those publicity stunts. I walked my life in a haze of women, one body after the next, a warm piece of flesh, never caring for any of them. Then Stella broke my resistance. She slithered her beautiful self through to the center of my heart. The love I have for this woman knows no bounds. It's infinite and all-consuming. I never thought I'd love anyone except my two best friends and myself, but Stella showed me that not only can I love someone with a deep devotion, but I'd be willing to do anything, and I mean anything, for that person. She's the moon, the stars, and my entire world. I slide a finger in her ass as I check her out in the mirror. Her eyes are shut. Open your eyes, Stella. I want you to watch yourself, pretty girl, to see how well you take me and how you beg for more. Her eyes flash open, deep brown irises consumed with lust as I insert one more finger into her ass. Look at how open your ass is for me. You like having my fingers in your ass, don't you, baby? Her tits bounce as her chest rises and falls. Yes, more, please. Give me more. So hungry, rabbit. I think you'd like to be fisted. One in your pussy and another in your sexy ass. She lets out a sigh of relief when I line up my cock to her pussy and push my way in. Such a dirty girl. So wet. Desperate for my cock to fill it. I smack her cunt with the bristle part of the brush and her body jerks. Gushing like a whore with that pain, aren't you, rabbit? Yes, she moans. Reach behind and spread your ass for me. Stella does as she's asked, her face pressed up against the mirror as her fingers open her sexy round ass for my pleasure. She whimpers as I remove my fingers, place the round tip of the brush handle toward her asshole, and slowly push it in. I'm gonna fuck your ass with the brush, Stella. You know what kind of girl lets men do that to her? No. A pretty little slut, I answer pushing the handle into her ass at the same time as I thrust my cock further into her pussy. And you know how much I love my perfect little slut. She backs up to meet my thrusts, 
The small room echoes with her screams of pleasure, mixed with the sound of my palm connecting against her thick ass. I rub her flesh and then do it again. Fuck, I love how your ass jiggles. Your body's so perfect, Stella. You're so beautiful. You're doing so well, pretty girl, taking it all from me. Her lips part and she pants my name. Ronan. My cock thickens simply at hearing my name on her lips. It's not the words so much as how she says it, with pure lust, emotion, and desire. Stella doesn't see me as a pretty boy to fuck that she can tell her friends about. Stella sees me as part of her heart, a central figure in her life. She sees me as worthy, valuable, and someone she wants to love. Say it again, I demand as I slap her ass. Ronan! The tip of my finger glides through her slit and connects with her clit. As I press down, she moans. So pretty when you're about to come for me, baby. I want to hear you scream my name when you blow all over my cock. I fist her hair and tug her hair back when she shuts her eyes again. Don't close your eyes, rabbit. I want to see the desire in them when you come. Your eyes on me, beautiful. I'm going to come. Good, rabbit. Look into my eyes when I make you come. My hips move with abandon as I thrust into her, one hand moving the brush handle, the other rubbing her clit. My balls tighten as she grips my dick like a vice, and I come in her pussy as she screams her orgasm. Her lips are parted, her eyes glazed with postcoital bliss. I don't have any panties. I'm going to be walking out there with no panties and cum leaking out of me. I chuckle as I lean in and place a kiss on her shoulder. Ask nicely, and I'm confident Axel or Kean will clean you up. She backs into me, and I get off while helping her to her feet. Why are you like this? Maybe the better question, Rabbit, isn't why I'm like this, but why me being like this makes you come like a champ. Chapter 2 Axel I hope Stella and Ronan are okay, Laura says as she sips her tea. My stepmother and father were a little nervous when we first told them about our situation. My father was taken aback. He wasn't sure what to make of his son banging his two best friends and his new stepdaughter, but Laura seemed to talk him off the ledge. I like Laura. I can see why my dad married her and where Stella got her strength and grace. She's fine. Ronan won't let anything happen to her. My father lifts an eyebrow at my words. Leaning back against the booth, I fold my arms over my chest and give him a smirk. You know people don't mess with what's mine. Learn that from you, pops. The restaurant is a little Italian place, an old mafia joint where the infamous Al Capone used to eat. A fucking institution and, shocker, my father's favorite place to eat. It's dimly lit with booths with high seating one can easily hide in, topped with long tablecloths that sweep the maple wood floor. A real shady place meant for shady dealings. My foot taps, a sign I'm restless waiting for Stella to return. I'm about to get up to look for her when she comes around the corner with Ronan trailing behind, wearing a shit-eating grin. The fucker got lucky. He snuck off to God knows where and got his dick wet. Took you long enough, Kean says as he pierces the tip of his finger with the steak knife in his hand without blinking. We accept that he's wired like a psycho, and we're glad he's our psycho. Ronan tugs at his gold belt buckle. We had a little business to take care of. Laura's eyes widen and my father clears his throat, probably to change the subject to avoid an uncomfortable situation. They're not stupid. They must know the type of debauchery we enjoy. Kean rises and moves out of the booth so Stella can slide in beside me. He slides in after her and Ronan follows. My fingers glide on the hem of her dress as I slide it up her legs until my pinky finds her heat. What do we have here? My little Stella had a little too much fun while she disappeared with Ronan. I smirk and she shakes her head, pleading with her eyes for me not to do anything. My father smiles. So, what did you want to discuss with us? I gaze at my father before smirking at Stella. Why don't you tell them, Stella? She jerks as my knuckles graze with her sensitive clit. Her eyes flash with shock, deer caught in the headlights, a sweet pink flush creeping up her pretty round face. Laura leans in on her elbows. What's going on, Stella? I purposefully drop some silverware under the table. Grabbing an empty water glass, I work my way down to retrieve it. I grip her thighs and force her legs open, staring at the cum leaking from her pretty pussy. 
No one said I couldn't eat dessert before my meal. I could eat Stella's pussy for the rest of my life and be satiated. Grabbing her hips, I jolt her upper body lower to gain better access to her cunt. Well, we wanted to talk to you two about our... Stella's voice shakes as I swipe my tongue on her sensitive clit. Our, um, wedding. A thud hits the wood table above me. <laughs> my sweet kitten is trying to keep her bearings with my tongue manipulating her pussy. Who are you marrying? My father asks. A traditional asshole with no imagination. Who does he think she's marrying? I push my tongue inside her, moving the cum in and out. There's something insanely hot about eating her out after Ronan or Kean fucks her. The idea of sucking both her cum and theirs drives me fucking wild. I move my hand to my pants and unzip my fly, releasing my hard cock. Stella stays silent, her focus on my tongue and not what my father's asking. I nip at her clit to warn her not to let on what I'm doing under here. We're getting married. Oh, God. The four of us. Why do you sound like that? Laura asks. I feel a little faint. When's our food getting here? Stella asks breathlessly. Good girl, trying to distract them. Good question. I'll go see what the holdup is, my father says. I I'll come with you. Laura scampers after my father. Kean bursts out laughing. <laughs> Seems like you two got saved. I ignore him and push one finger into her cunt while my tongue focuses on her clit. My hand pumps over my cock vigorously as I moan into her pussy. Fuck, she tastes so good. I don't know if it's the mixture of her and Ronan's cum in my tongue or the idea of our parents catching us, but it's all too much to bear, and I shoot directly into the glass. She shivers as my tongue moves rapidly against her clit. Her hands grip my head, pushing my face further into her warmth until her legs shake as she rewards me with her cum on my tongue. Stella's legs shake as I take one more swipe at her center, moving Ronan's cum up to her clit. Chapter 3 Stella Mortification and adrenaline rush through me as Axel climbs up from under the table. He winks before placing a glass filled with white liquid in front of me. I don't need to ask him what he wants. Axel gets off on humiliating me, and if I'm being honest, I get off on him doing it. It's this twisted game we play. I'm sure our games seem the opposite of love to others, but those people don't have a man who would jump into a burning building or oncoming traffic for them. I survey the three insanely handsome men beside me who would do anything for me. People can judge all they want about how we live or what we're into, but they can eat their hearts out because they've never felt what I have. I move to grip the glass, but Axel's firm hand wraps around my wrist. Not yet, rabbit. What would be the fun without a show? Wait until they get back. <sighs> Axel, you can't be serious. That's my mother. Leaning back, Axel crosses his arms, eyebrow raised and a wicked smirk on his full lips. So? That's my father. Kean leans over and nips my earlobe. He takes my coke and pours it into the glass. Better, sweet girl? Now she won't have a clue what you're drinking. His hand travels up my legs and he slides a finger into my center before dipping it into the glass and mixing the cum with the coke. He winks as he sucks the finger. Tastes good. My mother walks back to the table with Anthony's hand on her lower back as if he's guiding her. I was a little worried about their fast union, but my mother is happier than I've ever seen her, and the way Anthony looks at her rivals the way his son stares at me. The Moretti men have a way of making their women the center of their universe. If Anthony loves my mom as much as Axel loves me, she's genuinely happy. So what's this talk about weddings? Anthony asks as he follows my mother into the booth. The four of us are getting married, Axel says. Take a sip of your drink, Stella. I kick him under the table, and all he does is smile, the arrogant ass. He raises one eyebrow, cocking his head when I don't move quickly enough. I smile and sit there with my hands on my lap, and he bursts out laughing. What's so funny? My mother asks, confusion fluttering across her face. Axel leans his head on his elbow, his eyes never leaving my face. Oh, I was wondering if Stella would enjoy drinking from the source more than her glass. I think it might be interesting watching her try to catch her breath as she takes it that way. The asshole. 
He's going to sit here and tell our parents everything if I don't do what he wants. I choke on my saliva as I take the glass, tilting it to my lips. That's a good girl. Remember, Big Brother knows best. My mother sputters, clutching her chest at Axel claiming to be the big brother of the girl he's banging. I glare a warning at him. Anthony ignores the exchange. It's illegal to marry more than one person. He's probably used to his son's insanity and learned to ignore it instead of confronting it, which is smart since confrontation fuels Axel. Maybe we hold the ceremony with one of you. Yes, no one is getting married legally. It's more spiritual. Kean injects. It's the four of us. Our way. Welcome back. Hey there. So make sure you check out this week's giveaway, uh, the signed copy of Bound Together. Grab the ebook of Hide and Seek if you would like the four extra chapters. And check out her new release, um, Original Sin, which is the retelling of Weathering Heights with a happily ever after this time. So check all that good stuff out. Yep. And I guess we'll see you next week. So, or see you next on Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> Tell Can you imagine? <laughs> Tell them what to do. Fuck your day up. Make sure you're a bitch. Don't be a dick. Bye, guys. Bye. Read me romance. Read, read me romance. Read me romance, read, read me romance You could take a look in a book that's fine Or you could sit back, relax and unwind And read me romance, read, read me romance